everything I have. Bless and praise the Lord. Everything within me. My soul rises and prays him. My spirit breathes out worship for him. Everything I am. Bless and praise the Lord. Oh Lord my God, your greatness takes my breath away. Your greatness takes my breath away. Overwhelming me with your beauty, with your splendor, with your majesty. There is no like you, Lord. There is none beside you. You're glorious in holiness. You're fearful in praises. Lord, Lord, every living creature on the heart will be fed by you today. The birds in the sky, the animals in the forest, the fishes flourishing in the sea. Man, every being looks up to you. Do you know the reason every one of us we are living, Lord, this morning is because your breath is in us. This oxygen we say we breathe in and breathe out carbon dioxide is actually your breath. You take it away. Every living being on the face of the heart is dead. So everything. When I say everything within me, praise it means you have the one that sustains everything within me. So I command them to praise you this morning. And that's why the greatest virtue any man can have is the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? I remember as a child staying with my auntie, you know, and at three sons, the husband had the car. The car then, first time. We were staying in the first bag. And sometimes, while we were watching the television and we hear the car of the husband, everybody would quickly switch off the television, run into the room, you know, and we get ourselves busy with our books. Why would we do that? Because we are afraid of him. We fear him. What does it mean to fear him? We fear that our action may get him angry. Our actions may not be pleasing to him. Our action will result in punishment for us. So we fear him. Because he's our father at that time. Likewise, in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ said, Father, I have come to do your will. In essence, I live to please you. I live to do your will. The God who knows the beginning from the ending spoke about our Lord Jesus and said at his baptism, he said, this is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. In, in essence, who will please me? The fear of God means pleasing God in all things. And do you know that pleasing God is not just, okay, I don't lie, I don't steal, I don't take another man's wife, no. Pleasing God is that you have a walk with him. What was the greatest desire of God for Abraham? God came to him and said, Abraham, walk before me and be blameless. Not be blameless according to woman's standard. Be blameless in my sight. Have no blame. Do nothing against what I want you to do. This is the meaning of the fear of God. The fear of God is to live a life that pleases Him, to make Him happy, do things that make Him happy. The Bible says the whole of heaven rejoices when a sinner gives their life to God. It means it pleases God when we go into the world and win so for Him. The fear of the Lord is putting God first in everything you do. The fear of the Lord is ensuring that every area of your life is under the authority of God. Terrorists are not under the authority of the gov government of Nigeria. Because the government of Nigeria says you should not take arm um, against your fellow citizens. You should not control your fellow citizens with guns. So if a group of people arise and are trying to control another woman being by guns to do their biddings, the government of Nigeria says they are not living in compliance with the constitution of Nigeria. 
Likewise, the kingdom of heaven has a constitution. And fearing God means that we live within the jurisdiction of that constitution. I said last week that Jesus Christ said, a group of people, they believe in his name and they assume to work with him. But Jesus Christ said the way they carry out their ministry, their action is not within his authorization. He said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity, because the things you did were not authorized by me. I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't instruct you to do what you did. What you did was for your own satisfaction. What you did was for your own glory, though it seems seemingly good. So I have this quotation that it is good does not mean it is right. Something is good, yes, cool. It's good, yes. Um, to heal is good. It doesn't mean it's right. If you're motivated to heal is good, yes. But is it right at that time for you to do what you do? Why did you do it? Did you do it so that men can applaud you? Did you do it so that you can gain fame? Your motive is important. The Christian life goes beyond just, oh, I do everything I want to do. I get reward on that. It goes beyond that. It is the kingdom of God. It's a kingdom. There is a king of kings. That king of kings made us a kingdom of kings and priests. And because he is the king of kings, he is also your king. Christ can be your, your savior and not be your king. It means you are not under his authority. And I'm going to illustrate this with a story in the Bible. In the book of 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, the Bible spoke about the sons of Eli. They were priests. Who are priests? Priests are people that God raised unto himself out of the tribe of 12 tribe of Israel to represent him between the God, between God and his people. They are intermediary between God and his people. God gathers his people from all nations of the earth and brings them to the priest because we can't see God. God brings a man that they can see to represent him before them. So God gave rules, regulations for how sacrifices are to be offered to him. The priests are there to ensure that the people offer sacrifices to God are according to God lay down rules and regulations. But the sons of Eli, unlike Aaron, did not follow God's sacrifice for offering sacrifice to God. In essence, they don't care if God is pleased or God is displeased. The only thing they are interested in that the activities in the temple continues and brings gain to them. So they tell their servants, they that are servants of God, tell their own servants to take the portion meant for God, not according to how God said the portion should be taken. God said when the Israelites bring animals to sacrifice, God said that the priest should wait until the fat of any sacrifice is burnt before they take their portion. And you know their portion is that they don't even determine what they are taking. They are to take a fork and put it into the pot where the sacrifice has been offered and anything they take out is their portion. God did that so that they depend on him, so that he's the one that ensures it is God's portion that God gives to them. So God should determine what they take. But you know what the sons of Pharaoh did? They raised their own servant according to their own standard, according to their own rules. They didn't raise their servant according to the standard and the rules of the God who is their king. So they told their servant, you go and do this. We can't do it. But you can do it on our behalf. A man of God should not be seen doing this. But you are a servant, you can do it. So they authorized their servant to take sacrifices from the pot when it has not been born, when the fat has not been born, when it has not ascended to God as a pleasing sacrifice. They take their portion in the way they know that if you don't offer sacrifices according to God's standard, it's not pleasing to God. And they live like this for a long time, successful, seemingly. 
but in God successfully brings a prophet that can replace them. Do you know sometimes the reason why you see a lot of ministers of God, they are leaving, they are carrying out ministry to the people, not according to God's standard, and yet they prosper, they flourish, is because there is God has not the replacement for them is not ready. The sons of Philly continue to take sacrifice, continue to take the sleep with women at the temple. They continue to live in God's temple. They continue to benefit from God's temple, but not according to God's standard. And God let them be. <laughs> because he knows they know that God needs a man. So anything they present, he will take. But the God of heaven is not like that. The Bible says. The standard of God, this standard show, this standard show, God knows those who are His. A time came when God has successfully raised a prophet unto Himself. And these ministers of deception were destroyed. The fear of God is doing ministry, living your life according to God's standard and will. If there is any generation that needs the fear of God, it is this generation. Do you know one of the manifestations of the Spirit of God when it comes upon him and is it makes you delight in God's word. It makes you live a life that is pleasing to God. Isaiah 11 says, a branch will come forth and the spirit of God will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of cancer. And said, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. He will fear God. True wisdom is when you begin to learn how to live a life that is pleasing for him. The highest, one of the highest um, compliment Jesus received from God the Father is, Below my son, in who I am well pleased. Because he, he, I am, my life, his life pleases me, listen to him. Please, ministers of the gospel. The Bible says God has made his angels flames of fire to minister to us of salvation. God loves us, yes. He wants us to love him, yes. But we are also his ministers. We minister to God and we minister to his people. The Lord's portion is his people. Don't stand between God and his people, please. If there is something going on, there are men who stand between God and his people. How do they do that? The people see them, they don't see God. The people please them, they don't learn how to please God. They raise servants after their own kind and not servants after God. Apostle Paul said, he said, follow me as follow Christ. In a sense, Christ raised me so that I can raise others the way Christ has raised me. What will it profit you if you build cathedral? You are famous and you lose your soul. You can lose your soul if you don't do ministry according to God's instruction, according to God's later rule. I stretch my hand today and I pray, Father, you will baptize the body of Christ on earth again with the spirit of the fear of God. You will raise shepherds who fear you. You will raise shepherds, you will raise people who fear you, who live in your flesh. Men and women who delight to do your will, who delight to do your counsel. They will rise everywhere the sun hits. They will rise everywhere the sun hits. They will rise everywhere the sun hits. From all nations, from all tongues, from all language, men that fear God, men that want to do His will. You will raise them shepherds that will raise men like this all over the world. And as many shepherds are standing between you and your inheritance, your love will find them. They will repent and they will turn back to you. I ask in the name of your son, which is also your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father, because it is done. For in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.